Hey, MCE crew. The government is looking several moves down the road. The government and non-governmental organizations like the IMF, the um, Bank of International Settlements, uh, the World Economic Forum, they're looking several moves down the chessboard and they are recognizing that because of the way they are re-engineering this society, this global economy, they're going to be large swaths of people in this world, many here in America and throughout the rest of the world, who will never even come close to achieving financial independence. They will never own a home, they will never own a business, and they will never be able to pass on generational wealth because of the way that not only the society is being re-engineered, but also because the government refuses to be honest with people and start to teach them or just be honest, okay? The the, the data is, the, the material rather, is out there. You can learn whatever you want. And so the onus on, uh, the onus is on us in terms of not availing ourselves of an economic education because the information is out there. We I always say that, you know, we should have a curriculum in the schools, but you know what? We can't wait on government to do these types of things. They've proven that they won't. So we'd be fools to sit up here and continue to think that on well, some great getting up morning, the schools are going to have a curriculum that teaches financial literacy. All the information is out there. We can avail ourselves of it on our own. And we need to, and we need to start teaching our children on our own. Because if we don't, we are going to resign ourselves and our family to economic serfdom in this world. Okay. And it's not going to be pretty. Now, let me uh, give you some idea of the level of control that the government will have over you once they institute things like a universal basic income. Before we get to an example of that level of control, let's talk about Baltimore's universal basic income that they're going to put into effect. They're starting to take applications for it on um, next month in May. Uh, so what is universal basic income? Universal basic income is basically a program whereby people will get an allotment of money on a regular basis just because. Now, you know, the popular um, way to put that if you oppose it is just because. But the reality is, again, because the government's looking down the chessboard and they're saying, well, these people are going to need some money because they're going to have to eat. And if they can't eat, then they're going to be storming City Hall and we can't have that. So we're going to give them a little stipend, enough to get them through. If you look at like Cuba, Cuba gets a monthly food ration that lasts about 20 days. Uh, this is basically the cash version of that. Baltimore City's pilot program, uh, they're calling it just guaranteed income. Uh, it's going to start out paying 200 young, very low income parents $1,000 a month for two years. Okay, so that's $24,000. Now, details on this program are very, very hard to come by, which tells me that either they don't have any details, they're just going to be giving money away, or the details are such that they're politically un unpalatable. Now, I would think that if you're going to be giving money away to people, there would be some string attached. Maybe you could um, uh, require these individuals to come down and uh, participate in some entrepreneurial class so that they can, in two years, when this spigot is scheduled to cut off, they have a way. Two years is a nice long runway if you're trying to start a business, okay? And $1,000 a month is a nice little piece of capital for somebody trying to start a business. Is Baltimore City going to bring these people in and Put them with successful business owners, not bureaucrats, because bureaucrats ain't making no money, okay? They're the type of people that'll probably be on this universal basic income at some point, okay? We need people who are going to actually, uh, you can look at them and say, hey, he got owns a successful business. Oh, hey, look at her. She's got a successful storefront. She can, if she wants to, help teach how these people can start their own businesses. Um... But there's been no talk of that, all right? So this is just money being given out to pacify people. 
uh, with no strings attached. So this is going to leave them worse off, not better. A lot of these government programs have a requirement that you can't save money, okay? If you're on certain government programs, you can't have a lot of money saved. Like, uh, let's take Medicaid, for example. It, uh, under certain conditions, if you get on Medicaid, that's the needs-based medical program uh, for the country. It's administered by the states. Uh, if you, You've got to actually uh, impoverish yourself in order to get on it. A lot of these programs are like that. There are people that are living in these senior subsidized senior buildings. They can only have so much money in their checking account. Uh, and if they have more, then they risk getting their rent raised or risk being put out of the program. So a lot of these government programs are designed to keep you under, at, or under the poverty level. Okay. They don't want to see you rise above that. Shouldn't that be the goal? Shouldn't, shouldn't the goal be to reduce the amount of poor people? But ever since Lyndon B. Johnson's Great Society, we have subsidized poverty. The percentage rate back then was about 17% of the population was living at or below the poverty level. It's the same today. Only thing is, the country's got more people in it. So 17% today represents a larger number of individuals than it did back then when they first started that. My uh, neighbor and I, we were having a discussion over the weekend. And he's of a different political pers persuasion than I am. And he was going on and on about how we as conservatives do not care about the poor people and how we just don't want any programs for the poor people. And I had to stop him and say, oh, hold on, hold on. Let, let, let's take the emotion out of it and let's look at some data, okay? We actually looked at the Great Society uh, stat that I just gave you. And I said, furthermore, I don't want there to be poor people. I want to raise people out of poverty. But policies instituted by the left typically subsidize poverty and create more of it. And we've had over 60 years of empirical evidence to prove that. Um, and this program will be no different. Uh, it will it, it will subsidize poverty because right now in the country where if, if, if somebody comes up and says, especially if they're white, let's just be honest, if they're white and they come up and say, hey, what we should do is require that people who get this money, they should have to go to a business class and uh, start their own business so that they won't be poor one day and that, so that they can pass on generational wealth to their kids and lift them out of poverty. Invariably, that person's going to be called a racist. Okay, you know it. This is where we're at. This is a silly season in politics. So now with universal basic income comes a level of control that um, is very desirous. The government is very desirous the bureaucrat is very desirous. You have Fauci out there talking about the fact that the courts should not have decided the mask mandate on uh, airplanes and airports, that it should have been left up to him, basically. This little despotic troll, okay? But this is what you get when you get someone in a bureaucratic position for decades upon decades. Fauci is the longest serving public employee. You want to talk about term limits. The bureaucrat should be term limited. And yeah, you want to work for the government for 50 years, knock yourself out. But you won't work in the same department, amassing great degrees of power. And that idea, actually, I got that from France. When I um, went over there, I learned how uh, French civil service, they moved you around. Now, this was the late 90s, early 2000s. I don't know if they still do it. But they moved you around, and part of the reason why, because they didn't want you sitting in one department for 40 years and becoming po more powerful than the damn president of France. So here's what here's, here's a look at the type of control mechanisms they're going to use for people, and they're going to attach it to your economy. Now, if you're in that universal basic income program and the government says you got to jump, your only question is how high. You don't get to... Determine your own fate to a great degree. Otherwise, you know you're going to get cut off of the program. So up in Rhode Island. Now, let me check something real quick. Rhode Island. Uh, isn't their motto, or is it New Hampshire? I think it's, okay, Rhode Island's motto is hope. I was thinking of New Hampshire, live free or die. Uh, and New Hampshire, their motto should just be die. 
uh, at this point, uh, the way that, you know, all of these Northeastern liberal havens are acting. Anyway, uh, Rhode Island's motto is hope. Uh, hope that you can get the hell out of Rhode Island because what they are uh, up to is one of their legislators uh, has proposed that anyone who refuses to get a certain medication will be fined $50 per month. Now, that's easy if you're getting a uh, universal basic income. They could just take it out of your check, right? And now instead of $1,000, you get $950. And he goes further and says, uh, the legislation rather, go, bill, the proposal goes further and says that um, you shall owe twice the amount of personal income taxes as you would otherwise be assessed if you do not get this certain medication. Um, so the state will double your taxes if you don't comply with what they say they want you to do. Uh, and this also would apply to parents with regard to their children, okay? Um, so this person who proposed this and anyone who co-signs it should literally be tarred and feathered. That was a practice that um, was adopted here. I don't know if it was originated here, but it, it was done in early America where, you know, people disapproved of something. They coach you with tar and throw feathers on you. My God, that had to be, it wouldn't kill you. Okay. Uh, but it, it probably was months before you can get all that off. You Imagine the smell. Um, anyone proposing such should be tarred and feathered. It wasn't violent, but it made one hell of a statement. Uh, so that's what we're looking at, guys. Um, now, let's, let's end this out by looking at the fact that, looking at some evidence that proves that when it comes to all of these pronouncements, these guys want to live, want you to live, rather, by certain edicts and rules that they don't really believe in. And we can see evidence of that with the uh, back and forth between Elon Musk and Bill Gates. Bill Gates has a half billion dollar short position on Tesla, which basically means that he's betting against the future of Tesla. Now, what's Tesla's brand? Clean energy, right? That's their brand. Now, you can make the argument that, yeah, but you plug the car in and, you know, depending on where you are in the nation, most of that electricity is generated by coal or natural gas. All right, fine. Um, but this is Elon Musk's brand for most of the country. Most of the country believes that when you plug something into the wall, that there's a unicorn back there. And when you plug it in, his horn connects to the uh, plug and magically power is generated. They don't know anything beyond that. So Gates is saying he's got that half billion dollar short position, but at the same time, he wants Elon Musk to talk to him about climate philanthropy. Okay. Now, Bill Gates is a real strange, strange bird, man. You talk about Bond villain type guy. Uh, you know this cat didn't have any true friends in high school. Just that, that weirdo, you know, like, you know, he could have went either way, software giant, or maybe riding around with the plastic handcuffs in the trunk of his car, you know, that type guy. Um, but Musk is saying, look, man, if you really care about the climate so damn much, how, how come you got a half billion dollar short position on the company that is trying to move toward, uh, you know, a clean energy environment? Uh, environment? Why are you doing that? So he has, in typical Elon Musk fashion, which I love, he is not playing the political games. He's just exposing Gates for the hypocrite that he is. Gates is out there with this 500, uh, with this half a billion dollar uh, short position betting against Tesla but at the same time wanting to appear that uh, he is so munificent and uh, trying to do this climate philanthropy thing in association with the very man that he's betting against. Gates is trash, as are most of these, I don't even want to call them elites. Let me put that in air quotes until I find another... Um, another term. They are elite in terms of their nefarious nature. They're elite in that, in their ability to uh, carry out their, you know, their plans because they've got so much money. But elite in any other sense of the word, 
not hardly. Slight technical difficulty there, but uh, Bill Gates uh, is one of these guys. He doesn't believe in what he's saying. He's just using this as a mechanism for control. That's why he's bought a lot of farmland. It's no surprise that uh, the guy Klaus Schwab is out there telling us that we're going to eat bugs. Okay, we're going to do a whole episode on that. Um, Barack Obama, he's got this special on uh, Netflix where he's narrating this like it's a nature show. It's very well done in terms of the cinematography of it. I love those shows. But of course, he's putting in the spin about the rising sea levels. He doesn't believe a word of it because he has an oceanfront piece of property. If he thought that sea levels were going to rise and he wouldn't be able to get his equity out of that house, he would never have purchased it. Same with Al Gore. Okay. So these people are using these narratives in order to push more control mechanisms onto uh, social economic classes like the middle class. They're really compressing and eliminating a lot of the middle classes. Now, it is very, it is vitally important that you continue to acquire assets because that's what these people are doing, okay? That home up in Martha's Vineyard that uh, the Obamas have, sitting right there on the water, that home is an asset. They're continuing to acquire all kinds of assets. Again, Barack Obama was on that special. He is using his personality, his uh, experience as an asset to acquire great wealth. Now, denominating that wealth in dollars might be, you know, a little questionable in these days and times. We've talked about that in episodes uh, previous to this one about how wealth and redefining it, uh, we should be looking at hard assets. We should be really researching it and see if it fits into our portfolio in terms of real estate, uh, metals, uh, our own business, businesses, okay? Um, these banks, the relationship with the banks, we need to redefine those relationships because uh, when we go into the banks, and I've heard from many people, they're going in and they're asking for, you know, their money, but they're getting like a, a, a runaround because the banks don't want to see you leave. They want to see you, you know, contained within that uh, ecosphere. And they are big proponents of what the government has been doing with regard to uh, the $600 you know, tax reporting thing, because it, that makes money stay in that bank. So we're not going to belabor this, guys. We've given you some, you know, items to take a look at. But Gates, the Obamas, the Klaus Schwabs, all of these, and, and plenty of people you never even heard of, are creating a authoritarian, an economic authoritarian society, all right? where we will be relegated to, some of us, this is what they want, will be relegated to producing for, you know, everybody else, uh, subsistence types of incomes, okay, because prices will be so high, we won't be able to afford anything, this is the plan, and then using government subsidy, like we see with uh, universal basic income and uh, what we're seeing in uh, Rhode Island, using that to control the masses. This is happening. This isn't conjecture. It's not conspiracy. This is happening. All links in the description. Guys, I'll talk to you soon. To learn more about how you can achieve financial independence, check out these videos we recently posted on the Money Changes Everything channel.